Okay, so the Eurozone. Um, I think the most important thing um, with the Eurozone um, is not to confuse it with the EU. Yeah, so um, on the one hand, yeah, we have um, the EU yeah, that has 27 members. Um, within that, there are 20 who are part of the Eurozone. So whilst Eurozone pretty much members are part of the EU, there are some a few weird exceptions, but um, basically Eurozone members are part of the EU, but you can be part of the EU without being in the Eurozone. So that was true for Britain when we were part. It's yeah, true for Poland. So when you're talking about the advantages and disadvantages of the EU, um, be very careful if you start talking about the Eurozone. But likewise... Um, if you're talking about the Eurozone, yeah, you don't really want to spend that much time talking about the um, advantages and disadvantages of being part of the EU because that's kind of that's kind of given. You want to focus specifically yeah, on the advantages and disadvantages of sharing the same currency. So that's that's the key point, yeah, which is that these 20 countries they have they have the same currency. Yeah. Yeah. Um so yeah, they all they all use the euro. Um and what that then means, yeah, um, is that obviously there is um, the European Central Bank. Yeah, um, it sets interest rates, and it sets interest rates. Yeah, for the whole eurozone, because it doesn't really make much sense. Yeah, um, and indeed would be destructive if one part of the eurozone, given they have the same cur currency, you have interest rates different from others. If interest rates were six percent in Oxford and three percent in Cambridge then all that would happen is that Cambridge would empty of money as everybody transferred their money to, to Oxford. Yeah, it would be it would be it would be insane. So therefore, uh, the European Central Bank is in charge. It sets interest rates for the um yeah, the whole Eurozone, and it has an inflation target similar but not quite the same yeah, as that of the Bank of England, yeah, which is two percent, two percent or less. Yeah, so it's a strongly anti inflationary um organization. In principle, the other members of the EU, the remaining seven, um, are supposed to join once they've hit the convergence criteria, um, of which more later. But it's quite easy to avoid hitting those criteria if you don't want. So hence Poland probably should have joined many years ago, but has, has, essentially, has essentially chosen not to. So it's a group of, at the moment, 20 countries which share the same country. Um, and have a common monetary policy. Yeah, so the European Central Bank is in charge of interest rates and QE for the whole of the Eurozone.